What is going on, everybody? So, right at the top of this, I'm going to give out a content warning. Uh, we will be talking about sexual harassment. Um, and as you know from the title of the video, we are going to be discussing the lawsuit that has been filed against Activision Blizzard. I have been putting off making this video because I wanted more and more information to come out. I wanted to see what kind of response Blizzard was going to give to these accusations. And I have both been disappointed and at the same time not surprised by some of the initial responses. And then... Again, not really surprised with the then responses that came after even more backlash to those initial responses. So, as many people already know, and anybody in the gaming world is going to know, California has filed a lawsuit for gender discrimination against Activision Blizzard for numerous reasons. It's equal pay, people not getting positions that they deserve, sexual harassment, the list of accusations against Blizzard at this time are incredibly long. And I will preface everything coming up to say that it is my opinion and everything currently is allegedly. And I will also say all of these accusations, I believe them 100%. The sexual harassment uh, claims and stories that have come out from numerous female employees, current and former of Activision Blizzard, are not something that are new to tech or gaming. This is sadly something that is incredibly normal for these industries and... That is something that needs to change. It is something that needs to stop. Now, at the beginning of this, there was a statement that was made uh, by... Uh, uh, sorry, I'm terrible with names. The Executive Vice President, uh, Francis F. Townsend. And this was very much a statement that I think got the most backlash for being completely out of touch. Uh, when the lawsuit was filed, she said a recently filed lawsuit presented a distorted and untrue picture of our company, including factual inaccuracy, inaccurate old and out of context stories, some from more than a decade ago. It doesn't matter what context these stories have been in. It does not matter. They are horrifying stories and they are numerous and also, frankly, I don't care if it's from a decade ago. I still want to see them brought to light. And if people want to come forward and tell their stories about a sto about something that happened 20 years ago, I don't care if it's a decade old. This is a stupid comment uh, made by this woman. The Activision company of today, the Activision companies that I knew are good companies with good values. When I joined the executive leadership team, the executive leadership team... I was certain that I was joining a company where I would be valued, treated with respect, and provided opportunities equal to those afforded to the men of the company. For me, this has been true during my time. As a leader, I am committed to making sure that the experience I have is the same as the rest of the organization. We have a leadership team that is committed to these principles in every way. Of course you're being treated with respect. You are a vice president. Of course you already have an opportunity because, again, you are a vice president who has a background in the financial world. Your experience as an executive is not comparable to people who are on the dev teams and who are working the day-to-day of making the company go and getting games made and running the company. Trying to compare the experience of someone in an executive position to the people who have been making these claims is 
ludicrous. It shows how absolutely out of touch someone in an executive position is. On top of that, this woman has only been with Activision for a few months. What would she know about all of this except for what was told to her secondhand? She has been there for five months. This investigation has been going on for over two years. Pardon me. And this is this is nothing new. This is an out-of-touch executive's position on an accusation against their company. And, of course, their knee-jerk reaction is going to be, I have to speak out and protect the company. Now, this does not surprise me because many people do not know this. HR for your company, HR for almost any corporation, is not there to protect you. They are there to protect the company. And this has been made incredibly obvious by the stories that have been told by numerous women who have come forward and they have told their story how HR was not only unhelpful, but also aggressive and even threatened them with action. These actions by the company, these actions by HR, if true, are gross and unacceptable. I don't know what the fix to this is, except for constantly holding people accountable for this. There, if this investigation holds true that there is criminal negligence, that there is sexual harassment, anything that could be proven true, I do hope that this is just not a slap on the wrist. I hope everybody who is involved in the harassment, everybody who is involved in creating a culture and an environment that made all of these people uncomfortable in the place that they work, I hope that every bit of the law and the books are thrown at them. Every bit of it. So, some people are talking about why this happens. Is it bro culture? Is it frat culture? And I don't think it is. I think this is something insidious that has been in the, the nerd or gamer culture for a long time. A lot of guys, especially those who grew up in maybe the 80s or 90s, were looked down upon uh socially because they were gamers people might have made fun of them for being geeks or nerds and now they have this position where they're the cool guys now it's cool to work at a company like this and i don't know if they have a chip on their shoulder i don't know if this is just something left over from from their past and frankly i don't care it's unacceptable and I'm not going to go through and mention every single person who has come forward with the story. If you go on YouTube and search at all, you can find numerous accounts. Uh, and I suggest you do. I suggest you listen to them. Aside from that, um, I understand that people are going to be boycotting Blizzard. I, I am currently not one of them. Um, I do stream and make content for World of Warcraft. Um, I do play, I do plan on playing Diablo 2 and Diablo 4 when they come out. Um, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm at the point where I'm very close to done with Activision Blizzard. And some people might like say like, oh, why, why is this the last straw? Well, because if I boycotted every company that did something morally corrupt and morally awful, I wouldn't be able to enjoy anything. I wouldn't be able to own computers. I wouldn't be able to own a phone. I wouldn't be able to do or enjoy pretty much anything. But frankly, this is about the last straw. And for everybody else who is giving up, who is, who is quitting Blizzard games, who is boycotting games, I completely understand that and I support you. And I hope for those of you who streamed or made content uh, related to Blizzard games. I hope that you see success elsewhere. I know many people are moving to Final Fantasy XIV for WoW content creation. Um, but I think Activision now at this point, Activision Blizzard is at a turning point. Um, they have burned pretty much all of their, their social credit. 
their fans are like me. I've been a fan of Blizzard now for almost 20 years. Actually, yeah, more than 20 years now I've been playing their games. And I've about had enough. Um, and there's many people who, that's it. It's been enough and they've walked away and I understand it. Um, I did not want to go too much into detail because there's many other people who are better at that than I am. I just really wanted to come down on this first statement, uh, explaining how, oh, this is, this isn't really true. This is distorted. And then I also want to say thank you to the over 2,000 Blizzard employees, uh, current and former, who have stepped up. They have written an open letter condemning uh, this culture and these actions that have happened at uh, Activision Blizzard. Every person who speaks up, every person who boycotts, every person who says they're done with Blizzard hits them where it hurts. It, it hits them in their wallet. And sadly, that is the only thing a lot of companies listen to nowadays is, is this going to affect our bottom line? And I think it started to. Um, for anybody in the gaming community, women or men who have endured harassment, uh, you don't deserve it. I really hope that us as a community, as gamers can create a better environment for women, for LGBTQ. And if you are a guy and you are playing a game, any game at all, and you hear some guys or girls or anyone harassing somebody because of their gender, because of their sexual orientation, because their gender identity, anything at all, speak up, say something. Let that person know that they are not alone and they have people in this community that are going to step up and they are going to speak and they are going to defend them. Sorry if this was a bit rambly. I just think that the more voices that amplify this, the more voices that speak out in discontent and condemn these actions, maybe it will actually have more pressure on Blizzard and other companies uh, who perpetuate this kind of environment. Anyways, um, I hope you guys have a good rest of the day. Please stay safe. Please, please stay healthy. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.